Hello, everyone. Another book at Cindy Harper Speaks. And today, our book is about a girl who is very curious. It's called Cat the Curious. It's by Barbara Brooke Simons, and it's illustrated by Patrick Farley. So let's see what our cat is curious about. I didn't plan to get lost. Actually, I was never really lost. I was just, you know, curious. I'm sorry I scared everyone, though. I guess the only person who wasn't scared was me. Here's what happened. <clears throat> I was going to spend a week with Aunt Helen while my parents were camping in the Rocky Mountains. I should tell you that Helen is not my real aunt. She's an old friend of my mother's, and since she has no children of her own, she kind of adopted me as her niece. She has a little log cabin on a hilltop in the woods with a big stone chimney and a great view. The cabin is only about 40 miles from a city, but it feels farther away than that. I guess that's because Aunt Helen has no electricity or phone line. We use kerosene lamps and candles. Aunt Helen does bring her cell phone for emergencies. She's not that much of a pioneer. My parents and I left home very early that morning and we got to the cabin at about 2.30. Aunt Helen expected us at around 3, so we were a little early. Sure enough, she wasn't home. Aunt Helen is hardly ever home unless she has to be. Hi, folks. In case you get here early, I've gone to town for some of that cheddar cheese that Cat likes. I'll be back before 3. Anyway, there was a note on the door that said, Hi, folks. In case you get here early, I've gone to town for some of that cheddar cheese the cat likes. I'll be back before three. I saw my dad looking at his watch. Why don't you guys take off? I said, I'll be fine. And Helen will be back soon. And if I really want to get in, I know how to go through the kitchen window. Don't worry about me. Have a great time. I must have been pretty convincing. After many goodbye hugs, they left. I sat on the porch steps. The air smelled of warm grass and sweet clover. The last thing I wanted was to be inside. I just wanted to sit and listen to the sounds of nature. After all, I'd been listening to city noises all year. Talk about pollution. A warm breeze rustled the tops of the trees and grasshoppers chirped in the tall purple flowered weeds. A loud rat tat tat told me that a woodpecker was drumming on a nearby tree. There's that note. Suddenly, I heard a rustling noise behind the cabin where Helen kept the garbage can. Maybe a raccoon was looking for a snack. That reminded me I was hungry. I was unwrapping a sandwich when a chipmunk ran along the porch railing. It stopped and flicked its tail, and I gave it a bit of sandwich. After I finished eating, I began to get impatient. Where was Aunt Helen? I'd come all this way to enjoy the woods and I couldn't wait any longer. I was dying to see my favorite places again. I saw a flash of colors in the trees and said, what is that bird? That's when I knew I had to go explore right now. I knew these woods very well and was certain I could find my way. I wrote a note on a page from my notebook. It said, Hi, Aunt Helen. I waited until I couldn't wait anymore. I've gone to Fox Cliff. I'll be back by supper time. Love, cat. I put the note on top of my suitcase. Then I put on my backpack and walked into the shady woods. Under the trees, the air was cool and fresh. As I headed for Fox Cliff, sunlight shone through the leaves, making small dancing patterns on the ground. I should mention that Fox Cliff is a bluff of carved sandstone near the river. I'd been there a hundred times. Well, maybe more like nine or 10 times, to be truthful. Acorns crunched on the path under my feet. The noise startled two squirrels who jumped to a branch over my head. I tossed bits of peanut butter cookie toward them. They ran down the tree and scampered off with the crumbs. Then they followed me, hoping they'd get some more. They kept up with me as a trail twisted and turned. When I passed a huge hollow tree, they jumped into it and watched me go on my way. 
I continued on the trail, making all the turns I remember. Pretty soon I thought the path would wind uphill. Then the woods would open out and I'd be at the cliff. Funny, I said to myself, I didn't remember it was this far. I've been walking for a long time. Suddenly nothing looked familiar. I came to another fork in the path and knew that I had no idea which way to go. I chose one path and started down it. I was really lost. The trees were getting longer and my watch said it was getting late. I couldn't possibly get back to the cabin in the dark, even if I knew the way. It was then that I realized I would have to spend the night in the woods. I was really worried. In fact, I thought it was kind of exciting, but I knew Aunt Helen would be out of her mind with worry, and I felt bad about that. I looked in my backpack. I had a little food, half a sandwich, an apple, and some chips, a flashlight, and a knife. I had warm clothes, too. What I needed was fresh water. A little more to eat would be nice, but it wasn't necessary. Something moved in the bushes. I sat very still while a raccoon with something in his mouth scurried past. I remember that raccoons wash their food, so I scurried after it. He led me right to a spring bubbling out of a crack in a rock. As I filled my water bottle, I looked at the shallow water at the edge of the stream. A bright green plant was growing there, watercress. I picked handfuls of the spicy leaves for a wild salad. The raccoon had already finished his dinner. He didn't seem to be afraid of me at all. He looked up at me through his black mask. Okay, bandit, I said. The name just seemed to fit. What do you eat that I can eat? He trotted up the bank to a tangle of bushes loaded with small reddish fruit, wild plums. Bandit was inviting me over to his place for dessert. Soon it was time to make camp. I'd had a long day and I was awfully tired. I searched for a rocky overhang to lie under. That way, if it rained, the overhang would keep me dry. Then I used my knife to cut some long green saplings and I propped them against the rocks. I wove in thin branches to make a framework and I draped my sweatshirt over it, making a kind of tent. It was getting pretty dark. dark. I wasn't scared, not really anyway. There aren't any dangerous animals like bears or wolves in southern Wisconsin. I had a flashlight, but a fire would be nicer. Wait a minute, I said to myself. I took this backpack the last time I went camping. Maybe I still have that tin of matches. I did. Six precious matches. I had to use two of them to light a fire. The glow from the fire danced on the rocks behind me. Spring peepers cheeped in the trees. Big frogs rumbled in their bass voices. I curled up on a soft, on a bed of soft, dry grass and sweet-smelling pine needles. My extra sweater made a pretty good blanket. I watched the stars until I fell asleep. The next morning, I woke up early with the squirrel scolding me. Sorry, the peanut butter cookies are all gone, I said. It's your turn to get breakfast. How about some nuts, fruit, cornflakes? Squirrel ran up a hill towards some small trees. Round brown nuts hung from the branches. Hazelnuts, I said. I'd never seen them growing before. Somewhere I'd read that the Winnebago Indians loved hazelnuts. Before they get ripe, the nuts are supposed to be soft and sweet. I smashed a shell, tried one, and found that it was true. When I'd had my fill, I looked around. Through the oak trees, I saw the shape of a house. I climbed through spiky bushes toward it. When I got close, I saw that the house was a ruin with only one wall. Wild grapevines twisted over it. I was nip nibbling some grapes when Bandit poked his nose around the corner. Do you want some grapes, Bandit? I asked as I put a few on the ground. He picked them up with his paws, which looked just like little hands. You like people food, don't you, Bandit? Was that you and Aunt Helen's garbage can yesterday? Did Bandit understand me? I'll never know. Maybe he just knew that this was his world and I didn't belong in it. In any case, he started off through the woods. It looked as if I should follow him, so I did. Following Bandit, I saw how lost I was. I was nowhere near Fox Cliff. If people were looking there, they wouldn't find me. 
Bandit trotted quickly through the woods. I could see a faint path, not one made by people. Maybe it was a path that deer and other animals made when they went to the stream. We went on that way for at least an hour. Then things began to look familiar. Suddenly we came out of the woods and there was Aunt Helen's cabin, only a few yards away. Bandit scurried around the corner to the garbage can. Aunt Helen was on the porch. When she saw me, she started to cry. You're safe, you're safe. The state police are looking all over Fox Cliff. Why did you wander off like that? I must have gotten home just minutes after you left. I was just curious, I said. I thought I knew the way. I'm really sorry. I worried everybody. Cat the curious, Aunt Helen said. No more exploring on your own. Next time you get curious, I'm coming with you. Now, what is that raccoon doing on the porch? Well, that raccoon led Cat back to the cabin. So that was a good raccoon. If you like Cat the Curious, please press like at the end and I'll see you next time at Cindy Harper Speaks. Thanks for tuning in and bye for now.